Hello everyone! In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up Tascam's Model 12 Digital Mixer as an audio interface with Cakewalk by BandLab, the free DAW. But before we dive in into that, let me talk a little bit about how the Tascam Model 12 operates. The Tascam's Model 12 is a 10 input audio mixer, which can be a combination of eight microphones or seven microphones and one stereo line level, or possibly six microphones and two stereo line levels, or five stereo line level inputs. Each of the 10 inputs are individually sent to your PC via the USB as individual channels. Plus, you get the one stereo main bus going to your DAW as well. So in total, 12 inputs. Now, even though the Model 12 looks like an analog mixer, to the matter of fact that it is actually a digital mixer. The only analog part of the mixer are the input gains. On the screen, you actually see the red square. That's the analog part. Anything in the blue section is all digital. Unlike many digital mixers, who use menu system to control each of the channel's inputs, like compression, EQ, auxiliary sends, etc., Having individual knobs, sliders of each of the channel makes the Tascam Model 12 much easier to use. There are no menu navigations to do live mixing. This makes the Model 12 a really great versatile mixer, audio interface, multi-track recorder, and digital audio workstation, automation, DO controller, or surface control. The audio source from your microphone, or your guitar or your synthesizer connected to the Model 12 input flows from the top to the bottom. This is called the channel strip. First, it goes to the gain stage, where you can use the gain knob to control its gain input and the low cut. Then it goes to the mode switch, the compressor, the equalizer, the auxiliary send levels, panning, fader, and finally ends up to the main or, and or the sub buses for their output. The information for the USB channel is picked up right after the gain, here indicated by the yellow bar. This is set by the default and the recommended point. This way, any audio recorded in your DAW is not affected by the compressor or the equalization settings set by each of the channel strip. This allows you to later on adjust the compression and equalization in your DAW. Using the menu system, you can actually change this pickup point for the USB audio post compressor. This way, any compression during live recording that is uh, applied will also be applied and recorded in your DAW. This point can also be changed to post compressor and EQ. So any compression and equalization set during live performance will also be recorded in your DAW. A reminder that any setting that you have set for compression and EQ, once recorded in your DAW, cannot be undone. That's why I would personally recommend to leave the point at the default USB feed point just after the game. To learn how to change this default USB point, consult the Tascam Model 12 manual, or it could be possible that I'll make a future video to cover this topic. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. So each of the 10 inputs can be recorded on a separate track in your DAW, in this case, which I'm going to demonstrate in Cakewalk, plus the stereo main bus. At first, it might sound confusing, but this quick note might help you understand the channel strip a little bit better and how the audio is routed. The mode switch of each of the channel, it determines which of the audio inputs like the live input through the microphone or guitar, etc., the playback from your PC or the multi track recorder which is on board is routed to the channel strip, which includes a compressor, EQ, auxiliary sends, panning, etc., and it's summed to the main stereo bus. So the merge switch selects what follows to the rest of the channel strip. Now there are a few exceptions but they are topics for another video, and I have made few videos which cover those 
topics as well. Where even though you might have your merge switch selected to the PC, you are still able to listen to the live inputs. Before we set Cakewalk by BandLab and Tascam Model 12 as our audio interface, let's make sure we have Tascam into the right multi-channel USB audio interface mode. From the main screen, we press the menu button next to the multi-jog wheel and we will be able to see the menu. We scroll down until we see the menu system and then click down the multi-jog button. This takes us down another menu where we have several more menu items. Scroll down until you find USB audio. If your system USB audio says multi to the right, you are already in the multi-channel mode. If not, press down the jog button and from the selection using the multi-jog, make sure you select multi-input and press down the multi-jog to select multi-input. Stereo mix mode allows you to only send just the main bus, so there's no more multi-channel input. In your DAW or in your recording software, you will only see the stereo audio, which is the main bus. The stereo mix is great if you are mixing all as a stereo, like a podcast or video production, etc. Once we've done that, we can keep pressing the exit button to exit back to the main menu. And now we are ready to set up Cakewalk by BandLab for Tascam Model 12 to be our audio interface. On screen you can see I have Cakewalk by BandLab running and I have the welcome screen. Just gonna close that. The first thing we need to do is to set up our drivers and select Model 12 as our audio interface. We can go to Edit, Preferences. We can press the letter P or we can simply click Preferences as well if this is what's on your menu. From the top, Audio Devices. We have Input Drivers and Output Drivers. I have multiple drivers, so that's why I need to scroll down and then I'll be able to see the Model Mixer ASIO in and then for the outputs, I can scroll and see the Model Mixer ASIO out. The reason you see input 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11, that's because they are stereo pairs. That's how Cakewalk runs. And you can see from the driver name, we have 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 and 12 being our main inputs. We can go ahead and rename it so that it makes it easier for us to identify when we are creating tracks and assigning physical inputs to them. I'm just going to call it main bus and so on. As we can see from the output that we have 10 outputs. So we can feed audio back into the Tascam Model 12 to each of the channel strips as I demonstrated a few minutes earlier. By default, Cakewalk by BandLab, the master main bus, will use output 1 and 2. Now on Tascam Model 12, output 1 and 2 are separate faders, which will work fine. But personally, I like to use outputs 9 and 10, the last one on the right, because one fader is a stereo fader. Then I can ju just use one fader to adjust my listening level. So I can call this main output. This will make sense and you will better understand just a little bit later on. Next we go to driver settings. By default I select 48 kilohertz, but you can select 44.1 as well. But 48 kilohertz is the maximum capability of the Model 12. We can use the ASIO panel to select our buffer size. Here I have selected 128 samples. My laptop is about seven or eight years old, and it's quite capable of handling 128 samples. If you hear click noises or dropouts, just increase your buffer and close that. And these are my playback and recording settings. Yours might be a little bit different, but feel free to have a look and copy mine. 
once we have all of this, we can click OK. And we are now ready to create a new project. I'm just going to select an empty project. Let's add a track. I have a microphone connected to my input one. So here, model, as you can see, input one and two is by default selected. You can, we as a stereo in one and in two are there as well. So I'm just going to in one, I'm going to record enable and input monitoring as well. And let's create. So now I have a track ready to be recorded. I'm just going to pick up my microphone and speak. And you can see the level is already going up. Let's open the console view. Here we can actually see the console and the levels going up for my microphone. And here is my Buster Bus. This one right here. And it selected Apple 1 and 2, which is going back to my Model 12 input 1 and 2. From here, I can select output 9 and 10. And now that it's selected output 9 and 10 as a stereo pair, I can use my fader 9 and 10 as my playback. So anything that is being played will be playing back at 9 and 10. You don't have to follow this, but I find it quite easy and better control of my Model 12. So this way, if I am still recording a microphone or a guitar or some other instrument using channel inputs 1, 2, 7 or 8, I can use my 9 and 10 as the playback channel. So now I'm ready to kickstart and start recording and create music. And I hope you do too. If this was helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. And I'll catch you in the next one.